Welcome, seventh grade science students, to your first full online lecture. This is Mrs. Sturgeon, and remember that you can pause or rewind or stop this video at any time um, as needed. Our first topic we're going to cover is called Discovering Cells. It's from chapter one in your book, lesson one. It starts on page four if you'd like to follow along. First up, um, our book asks us the question, what are cells? And it gives us this definition that cells are the basic unit of structure and function in living things. But let's take a look at what that actually means. Let's start with the word basic. That's the first um, kind of word that we see in our definition. To start, cells are the smallest things that are considered to be alive. So anything that is smaller than a cell is not alive. It is not living. The next word we come to is structure. Um, the structure of something is what it is made of uh, and how it's put together. So you can think of the structure of your house, the structure of our school, the structure of any other building, the structure of your car, even the structure of a phone, for example. And living things look the way that they do based on how their cells are together. So birds look different than humans. Uh, both birds and humans look different than bugs, for example, because our cells are put together in different ways and we have different structures. Function is a little bit more complicated word. Um, function means how something works or what it does. So, for example, the function of a calculator, um, what it does is it helps you uh, compute math problems. Okay? The function of a refrigerator is to keep your food cold, for example. So a function of a living thing is a process that allows it to live and grow and reproduce, which are things that all living things must complete. That's our functions. We have to live, we grow, we re reproduce. Um, we have to do things like breathe and get rid of waste. Those are all functions. The history of cells is, is kind of a funny one. Um, until about the 1600s, no one even knew cells existed. People had ideas that there were these very small things. They weren't sure if they were alive or not. Um, one of the things, um, one of the kind of the theories of what these small things were, were called animacules. And there's a picture over it on the um, right hand side of your picture right now and one of the ideas of where babies came from um, prior to the 1600s was that there are these fully formed adults inside these little cells um, they eventually grew and grew and grew and that's kind of what this picture is showing until the baby was born and the baby was essentially a a little version of a full-grown adult and we obviously know now that's not true that babies are quite different than adults developmentally um, but that was kind of one of the the thoughts. Um, there's also a famous fruit fly experiment. Um, back in the day, people used to think that flies, for example, could um, spontaneously grow from trash or rotting meat um, because that's where they always see flies like hanging around trash or other gross things. Um, a scientist finally decided to ex investigate this a little bit more and what he did is he put a chunk of rotting meat and just left it out and he put a chunk of rotting meat um, inside a jar and put a lid on it. And what he found, obviously, as you could guess, is that the rotting meat that was left out was covered in flies. And the rotting meat that was just in a jar that was completely sealed had no flies in it. And this was kind of one of the first experiments that led them to think, huh, maybe flies don't come from rotting meat, for example. Maybe they, they are attracted to the rotting meat and go to it, but they don't actually spontaneously, magically arise from the rotting meat. Um, people back in the day used to have lots and lots of theories. Um, some of them we would consider to be calling everything magic at this point. Um, and it wasn't until the 1600s when we were able to see these really small things called cells that we could actually start to investigate um, things about this very, very small living world that we knew nothing about. 1590 was kind of the start of um, discovering cells. The Janssen brothers made the first microscope. There's a picture of it on this slide. Um, just to give you kind of a time reference, 1608 Galileo invented the first telescope and was able to see detail in outer space. So around the same time we were able to see very, very small things and very, very large things that are very far away from us. Um, kind of all about the same time. 1663, so nearly 100 years later, Robert Hooke um, he was the first guy to see cells. He, they were dead cells in a slice of cork, which comes from a cork tree. Um, he was the first person to actually call cells cells. Um, he is the really super attractive guy over on the left um, with the flowing hair. His drawings of these cells are shown in the middle of your screen. 
Um, and he called them cells because a cell is just a room. It's also the same word that we use for jail cell. It's just a space. And he thought that these spaces um, just looked like little bitty rooms. So he called them cells, and that's the word that we still use today. 1680s Anton van Leeuwenhoek, um, he built microscopes as a hobby. He was a pretty big science nerd. Um, he looked at all kinds of things, but the very first thing that he looked at um, was pond water. And in this pond water, he saw living, moving cells. Um, he was absolutely astounded by this. It was in My Planet Diary. We saw a little um, piece of his writing. Um, other people were actually pretty skeptical. They didn't believe that there could be these little small things floating around in water that were alive and moving on their own. Um, so for about the f next 50 years, nothing really happened in terms of cell discovery. Leeuwenhoek was pretty convinced that this was a big deal. Um, he continuously built microscopes and looked at all kinds of things, including blood and skin. Um, but nobody really believed him or took it seriously. They didn't think it was that big of a deal. A um, couple other dates for you, just to give you some time reference. 1752, uh, electricity was discovered, finally, so we could have light. Uh, 1776, Revolutionary War took place, um, 4th of July, the reason why we all watch fireworks. 1784, eyeglasses were invented. Um, 1786, ice cream was invented, hallelujah. 1804, Lewis and Clark set off to explore the great land that would become known as America. Um, after all this happened, finally we see some more about cells and cell discovery. Um, then kind of a whole bunch happened all at once. In 1838, Schladen, um, he looked at plants and he decided that plants were made of cells, the same stuff that Hook and Leeuwenhoek talked about um, quite some time ago. Also the same year the first photographs were taken, these were um, going to become what we now call selfies, but these photographs were obviously black and white. They took about an hour to, to take. Um, so that started in 1838. 1839, so just a year later, Schwann said that animals are made of cells. He started to look at animals, um, and he said, I think these are made of the same things that plants are made out of. Um, 1844, the first telegraph was sent. That's kind of like the first text a long, long time ago. And then 1855, we kind of see the start of cell theory, when a guy named Verkau said that all cells come from other cells. And this, this kind of leads back to our fruit fly experiment that we talked about. Um, where things can't just, living things can't spontaneously arrive from dead. Um, 1867, Nebraska became a state, an official state in the U.S. Um, so let's go back to cell theory. What the heck is cell theory? Your, your book talks about it. It gives these three parts. It says all living things are made of cells. Cells are the basic unit of structure and function in living things. And all cells are produced from other cells. Um, so let's take a little bit closer look at what each of those things means. All living things are composed of cells. So what that basically means is everything that is alive is made up entirely or almost entirely of at least one cell. Some organisms are single-celled. They're called unicellular organisms, and they're made up of only one cell. There's a picture of one on your screen. Other organisms, um, like humans, for example, are made up of billions of cells. So if it is alive or was once living, it is made up of cells. So all living things are composed of cells. The next part of cell theory is that cells are the basic unit of structure and function in living things. And we've kind of already gone through this um, word by word. So the cell is the smallest or most basic part of anything living. Anything smaller than a cell is not alive. Um, and you can kind of think of cells like Legos or bricks where each individual Lego is a cell. You put all the Legos together and you can build um, all kinds of different structures. And that's the same idea with cells. If you put them together, they can join together to form larger structures. And finally, all cells are produced from other cells. So you remember the fruit fly fiasco we've talked about. Um, we, of course, know much better now. All cells must come from other cells. Um, it's the same idea that all rabbits have to come from other rabbits, and puppies, they come from dogs, and babies come from humans, and little tree seedlings, they come from other trees. Same thing with cells. Cells don't just magically appear in the universe. They have to come from other cells. Kind of a summary for us. Um, cells are the smallest living organisms. They make up all other living organisms. They were discovered around 1600. And it was kind of a, a long process to, to really realize what cells um, actually mean. That for scientists to realize this was a, a big, big deal. 
Um, and the cell theory is made up of three main parts. All living things are made of cells. Cells are the basic unit of structure and function in living things. And all cells are produced from other cells. I hope you guys enjoyed your first online lecture. Um, remember, if there's anything that's confusing or that you'd like to see again, you can go back um, to that part and rewatch it. Thanks!